Hey Jackals, in today's video we'll take a look how you can fade in and out media clips, be it images, videos or the combination of the two using DaVinci Resolve. And one use case is to use this as a camera overlay in a podcast. Now let's get digital. I'll be doing this in the Fusion Composition. So first right click in the media pool, make a new Fusion Composition. When you have it, put it onto a timeline and go into the Fusion page. Now when we finish the effect, we'll make a macro and if you use just one clip, you'll be able to simply put it onto the clip as an effect. But if you use two clips, we'll actually have to make a Fusion Composition, then go into the Fusion page and apply the macro. I'll just show you how to make a template, but if you have a face clip video, you should use that video. So in this case, I'll just use my logo. And what I want to do is to use some audio and fade this logo in and out. Now what I like to do is have the media out have the same resolution as the timeline. In this case, the image is not the same resolution as the timeline. So that is why I use a background node and a merge. The background will go to the background and the media in to the foreground. And now the media out has the 1080p resolution. I'll simply lower the alpha in the background to make it transparent. And in the merge node, we'll be animating the blend to fade the image in and out. And we'll do the same with the clip. Now for this next step, you can use any node that has a slider. Ideally, you want this kind of a slider, but you don't want to use a node that is connected to the composition. So in this case, I'll use a custom tool, control space or shift space, custom tool. And this tool has a bunch of number ins and I just need one of them. You can also disable them if you go to the config and simply unclick all of them. Well, the ones that you don't need. And for this next step, you actually need to download a plugin. I'll leave a link down below. It's called Reactor. Once you have it installed, you will have to go to Workspace, Scripts, Reactor and open it. And this step will take some time. So I'll just come back when it's finished. So once you have this installed and opened up, you will be able to install any plugin. And in this case, you want to install an audio plugin and we'll install the sockless audio. I already have it installed, so I can simply close it. To use this audio plugin, you can go to any node that has a slider. In this case, I'll use this one, right click, modify with, and search for audio wave. Then go to the modifiers tab and input a file. It only takes a wave file. Simply search pros, I'll use this one. Now at the moment, you can leave everything as is, then go back to the tools and see what the values you'll get. So I see values from 0 0.1 all the way to 0.5 most of the time. And let's say that that's good enough. I could also go back to the modifiers and scale the amplitude. And if I change this to 2, then everything is basically multiplied by 2. And I want to use this value. So I will pin it. Then I'll go to the merge node. I want to animate the blend, so I will right click, make it an expression. And if I connect it to the number in one, this will now automatically animate, but it animates with the same values. But I want to animate it in the range of zero to one. And currently it goes anywhere from zero to over one. And it also changes the value with every frame. And I don't want to do that. So to keep the same value, I'll use an expression. So in this case, I want to make an if statement. So I I F if custom tool dot number in one, which is this value. If this value is, let's say, maybe 0 0.7. So if this value is less than 0 0.7, the image will be faded. And the value that I want to use is 0 0.2. Otherwise, if the value is greater than 0 0.7, the value will be 1. So it will be fully visible. So let's see how that looks. 
it looks better now we can't hear anything because we just use the audio in the custom tool so you actually have to use the same audio in the timeline if you want to hear anything and i'll just extend this fusion composition to be the same length as the audio and i'll wait for this to render out so that we can have a listen <laughs> So I would actually want to have this visible as well because it just fades for a couple of frames. So I would use maybe 0 0.3. I'll use 0 0.3 just so it doesn't fade in and out as much. Now this is one way how you can do it and I'll show you how you can do it with two clips. So maybe I want to use this one so it goes from this icon to this one and we'll do a similar thing as before. Just now we won't be animating the merge, so I'll use a different one. Now instead of the merge, because the merge can only blend the foreground, we will be using a dissolve node. So control space over shift space, dissolve. And what this node does, if I just show you the difference, so the merge as you can see will only blend the foreground and the background stays the same, but the dissolve node can switch between the background and the foreground and that's what we want to do but we want to do it without any decimals so that we don't have any actual dissolve going on so we'll be having either zero or one and to do that we'll simply use a similar expression as we had here so i'll simply copy it then go to the dissolve right click in the background expression copy this expression in but now because we don't want to have this as 0.2 because as you can see it now dissolves a little bit so simply use 0 so now this is either 0 or 1 so now I'll just connect it like that and if you go back here and wait for this to render out <laughs> So in this case the inputs are switched, so you just have to switch between the media in 1 and the media in 2, and to do that simply is to use Ctrl T on the dissolve node. So now this media in will be displayed when it's actually talking, and this one when it's silent. And now the last thing that you want to do is to make a template. In this case, because I only have one input, this will be an effect, so select all of the nodes, right click on the last one in this case it's the merge go to macro make one you'll probably have custom tool enabled meaning that it's red so uncheck this because you don't want to have any output and what we want to do is maybe enable some options in the audio wave which is right here so which options do you want to have enabled well maybe you want to be able to change the mode the filter amplitude scale maybe the offset so just check all of the options that you want in this case i'll just adjust the amplitude scale and then in the merge node i want to be able to change the expression because maybe the threshold will not be 0.3 all of the time so i'll search for blend which is under blend clone enable it then you can go to file i suggest you save as group I said that this will be an effect, so you can go to templates, edit effects, save it here, and then it will open up in the edit page. But now I'll show you how you have to save it if you use two media ins. So we'll also have the custom tool. We'll connect this one to here, and then this will simply go in a second merge because this one is blended. So just like that. Then select all of the nodes again right click on the merge because it's the last one before the media out now you'll make a macro you'll make similar changes in this case we would select dissolve instead of the merge because now dissolve has the expression then again go to file save as group and now you're inside the macro folder and you want to save it here now when you make a macro if you make it for one video clip when you go to the edit page open the effects tab type in the name of the effect 
and simply put it onto the clip. But if you make a macro for two clips, what we'll have to do is have two clips on the timeline. What we'll want to do then is select both of them and make a new fusion composition. And now when you go into the fusion page, you will actually have both media ins. What we'll want to do then is open the select tools, type in the name of the macro. In this case, I have this saved. If you saved it as a group, you can now open it and also ungroup it. Now you'll have to connect the media ins manually. And if you didn't uncheck the output from the custom tool when you made the macro, the connection would actually look like this and you wouldn't be able to see anything. That's why I've unchecked it and then it will automatically connect like this. That is for the first example if you use just one clip. Now I actually have some animation and the position is also different. Now in the custom tool, if you go to the modifiers and the audio wave file, you will actually have to also enable this option, audio wave file, because you want to be able to change the audio. Otherwise, you will have the same audio as when you made the macro. And maybe one thing that you also want to do is to use a transfer node so that you can position and scale the images and the video clips just as you want them to. And that's how you can automatically fade the clip visibility in DaVinci Resolve. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.